the humanoid robot race just took an unexpected turn and it's not coming from Silicon Valley or Boston Dynamics. Japan, the nation that gave us ASIMO, pioneered robotic companions and has been quietly perfecting automation for decades, just unveiled something that's making the entire robotics industry reconsider what's possible. We're talking about machines so lifelike they trigger genuine emotional responses. Robots with synthetic skin that feels warm to the touch and AI systems sophisticated enough to read your mood and adjust their behavior accordingly. While American companies race to build warehouse workers and Chinese firms focus on manufacturing efficiency, Japan is taking humanoid robotics in a completely different direction, creating machines designed not just to work alongside humans, but to genuinely connect with them. Today, we're breaking down the latest generation of Japanese humanoid robots that are rewriting the rulebook on human-machine interaction and why the rest of the world is scrambling to catch up. The robot that looks too human. Let's start with the one that's breaking the internet. Engineered Arts as a Mecca has evolved from viral curiosity into something genuinely unsettling in the best possible way. In 2025 and heading into 2026, a Mecca represents the clearest example of what happens when engineering meets artistry in humanoid design. This isn't your typical industrial robot with exposed servos and rigid movements. A mecha's facial expressions are so eerily realistic that people meeting it for the first time instinctively treat it like a person, not a machine. The latest version can pick up subtle vocal cues in your voice and adjust its own tone accordingly. If you sound upset, a mecha reacts with concern, narrowing its eyes slightly and tilting its head in a gesture of empathy. If you're excited, it mirrors that energy with wider expressions and animated gestures. What makes a Mecha genuinely revolutionary isn't just the silicone skin stretched over its mechanical skull, it's the integration of dozens of micromotors controlling individual facial muscles. Most humanoid robots can manage maybe five or six basic expressions. A Mecha has refined this to over 30 distinct micro-expressions, allowing it to convey nuanced emotions like skepticism, curiosity, mild amusement, or gentle concern. People describe interacting with a mecha as profoundly weird. Your brain knows you're talking to a machine, but your instincts tell you there's someone home behind those eyes. That cognitive dissonance is exactly what makes a mecha so fascinating. It's crossed the uncanny valley threshold where instead of feeling disturbing, it starts feeling almost natural. Sophia's evolution from celebrity to conversationalist Remember when Sophia from Hanson Robotics became the first robot granted citizenship by Saudi Arabia? That was 2017, and it felt like a publicity stunt. Fast forward to 2026, and Sophia has undergone multiple generational upgrades that transform it from celebrity robot into genuinely capable conversationalist. The newest models feature dramatically improved skin-like materials that respond to lighting more naturally advanced eye tracking that maintains genuine feeling eye contact during conversations, and micro-actuated facial muscles capable of performing incredibly nuanced expressions. But the real upgrade isn't hardware, it's software. Sophia's AI backend has been completely rebuilt to eliminate the repetitive, looping conversations that plagued earlier versions. Now, equipped with advanced language models and contextual memory, Sophia can hold long, natural conversations without falling back on scripted responses. It remembers previous interactions, references earlier parts of conversations, and adapts its communication style based on who it's talking to. That level of conversational fluidity makes Sophia feel far more alive than its predecessors. The robot has been deployed in interviews, talk shows, educational settings, and even co-hosted events where it needed to improvise responses in real time. This adaptability represents a fundamental shift. Sophia isn't just performing anymore. It's genuinely interacting. Russia's contribution, Artie and the performing robots. While Western robotics focuses heavily on industrial applications, Russia has taken a surprising creative angle with robots designed specifically for entertainment and emotional connection. Enter Artie, one of the most expressive humanoid robots ever created. Developed by the company Show Expo and unveiled at the International Exhibition Forum Russia, Artie features anatomically accurate facial mechanics, a wide range of micro-expressions and elastic silicone skin that moves naturally during speech and emotion. What makes Artie remarkable is its specialization. This robot was built specifically to perform. It can recite poetry, sing songs, express theatrical emotions, 
and interact with audiences in ways that feel genuinely engaging rather than robotic. At the forum, Artie performed a duet with famous Russian singer Nadezhda Babkina, singing My Homeland together on stage. The performance wasn't just a technical demonstration, it was emotionally resonant, with Artie expressing the song's sentiment through facial expressions and body language synchronized with the music. Babkina herself praised Artie's vocal abilities while cautioning against over-reliance on artificial intelligence in creative fields. But here's what makes Artie genuinely significant. It's the world's first mass-produced humanoid with this level of expressive capability. The creators announced that Artie is available for custom manufacturing in any quantity, suggesting they've cracked the production challenges that keep most expressive humanoids as one-off prototypes. The uncanny valley is shrinking, the uncanny valley, that uncomfortable feeling we get when something looks almost human, but not quite, has been the biggest psychological barrier to humanoid robot acceptance. But 2025 and 2026 are proving that valley might be narrower than we thought. Robots like Geminoid F, developed by Professor Hiroshi Ishiguro in Japan, are specifically designed to trigger empathy rather than discomfort. Geminoid F was modeled after a young Japanese woman, complete with realistic silicone skin, natural hair, and clothing that makes it look like a person from across a room. The robot has 12 facial pneumatic actuators that allow for subtle expressions, and it's equipped for both remote teleoperation and autonomous AI. What's fascinating is that Geminoid F has already crossed into entertainment. It performed in theatrical productions and even appeared in films, including the 2022 movie, Digital Human. When audiences watch Geminoid F perform, they report a strange phenomenon. After a few minutes, they stop seeing it as a robot and start perceiving it as an actor with unusual mannerisms. That psychological shift is exactly what designers are hoping for. The goal isn't to create perfect human replicas, it's to create machines expressive enough that we naturally respond to them as social entities rather than objects. Japan's secret weapon, decades of cultural preparation. Here's what many Western observers miss when analyzing Japan's humanoid robotics dominance, the cultural foundation that's been building for generations. While American and European cultures often portray robots as threats in science fiction, Japanese culture has embraced robots as potential companions, helpers, and even family members. From Astro Boy to Doraemon, Japanese media has consistently presented robots as benevolent, emotionally complex beings, worthy of empathy and respect. This cultural difference translates directly into design philosophy. Japanese robotics companies don't just ask, what can this robot do? They ask, how will people feel about this robot? That emotional consideration drives design decisions that Western companies often overlook. Consider Katamaroid, developed by Professor Ishiguro, for the National Museum of Emerging Science and Innovation in Tokyo. This robot resembles a young girl and was designed specifically to announce news and weather forecasts in multiple languages. But the design wasn't optimized for efficiency, it was optimized for relatability. Kotomoroid makes synchronized lip movements with speech, blinks naturally, and expresses emotions through facial movements that feel gentle and non-threatening. The robot exists not to replace human announcers, but to explore how people respond to humanoid communication in public spaces. That research-driven approach, prioritizing human emotional response over pure functionality, represents Japan's strategic advantage in the humanoid race. The social robots, Nadine, and the companion revolution. While industrial robots focus on manufacturing efficiency, social robots represent an entirely different category machines, designed specifically for human companionship and emotional support. Nadine, developed at the University of Geneva and built by Japanese company Kokoro, represents the cutting edge of this field. Nadine is a robotic clone of Professor Nadia Magnanat Thalman, designed to serve as both secretary and companion for people with special needs. The robot can read books aloud, send emails, make video calls, and communicate with families, but the real innovation is emotional intelligence. Nadine can converse in six languages, remember people's faces and previous interactions, and respond to conversations with appropriate emotional context. It makes eye contact during conversations, understands gestures, and reacts to what it sees and hears with facial expressions and upper body movements. 
Most remarkably, Nadine can change its mood depending on how it's treated. If you're kind and patient, it responds warmly. If you're frustrated or dismissive, it becomes more reserved. This dynamic emotional response represents a fundamental shift from programmed reactions to adaptive behavior. Nadine isn't just executing social scripts, it's learning social dynamics. Where this is all heading, by 2026, the humanoid robot landscape has fragmented into distinct categories, each pursuing different visions of human-robot interaction. Western companies like Boston Dynamics and Figure focus on utility robots that can work in warehouses, construction sites, and factories performing repetitive or dangerous tasks. Chinese companies emphasize manufacturing efficiency and scalability, building robots designed for mass production and industrial deployment. But Japan has carved out something different. Robots designed for emotional connection, social interaction, and human companionship. The question isn't which approach is better, it's which approach will define how billions of people experience robotics in their daily lives. As these technologies mature, we're approaching a threshold moment. Within the next few years, it may become genuinely difficult to tell at a glance whether the person across from you is flesh and blood or carbon fiber and silicon. That's not science fiction, it's the logical trajectory of technologies already demonstrating human-level facial expressions, natural conversation, and adaptive emotional responses. Japan's humanoid robots aren't just shocking the world because of their technical sophistication. They're shocking the world because they're forcing us to reconsider fundamental questions about consciousness, connection, and what it means to be human in an age where the boundaries between person and machine are becoming increasingly blurred.